Speedrunners have already found many different glitches and skips in the Super Mario RPG remake and they fall into two categories, movement tricks that avoid enemy encounters and glitches that save time by sequence breaking. So let's start with the movement glitches. In Mushroom Way, there's an item box with a flower tab inside of it. Flower items increase your flower points, which allow you to use special moves, and any easy flowers are welcome to the speedrun. To reach this flower normally, you need to fight the Goomba standing on the spinning flower before you can use it to jump to the platform with the chest, but there is another way up. If you ever so carefully position yourself to barely land on the flower, you'll avoid having to fight the Goomba, which saves a few seconds. And if we move forward to the sunken ship, we'll find another time save that involves skipping a mandatory fight. In the beginning of the sunken ship, there's a word puzzle you're supposed to solve that has six clues hidden in different rooms, with each being guarded by a Greeper. It's relatively easy to bypass the Greepers guarding the clue doors, but the Greeper guarding the puzzle room itself is a bit trickier to get past. If you align yourself with the crates to the left, then run straight, it's possible to get through the door without taking the encounter, saving about 12 seconds depending on what enemies would appear in the fight. If we move ahead a few more areas, we find the Stumpet Skip in Barrel Volcano. When you enter the room after the save block, there's a Stumpet right in front of you that appears as though it's supposed to be mandatory, but if you align to the wall, you can make a tight jump between the enemy to get below it. From here, it's possible to walk the tightrope between the edge and the Stumpet to get past, but not long after this, it was discovered you can align to the upper wall and jump behind the Stumpet, which saves a couple of seconds over the first version. Unfortunately for the Stumpet, there's an even better skip. If you wait for the Spiny to align itself with the wall, you can initiate a fight then run from it. When you run from a battle, the enemy will blink and you're unable to start another fight with it while the state is active, which means you can jump on it for a brief period. When the Spiny is flashing, it's possible to use it as a platform to jump up to the ledge with the Stumpet, skipping the room behind it and the risky skips where you jump over the Stumpet itself. The last scripted fight we'll be skipping takes place in the final area of the game, the Factory, where machine-made versions of enemies and bosses you've previously defeated are speeding at you on conveyor belts. One of these in particular is supposed to be a forced encounter, as the Bowyer clone doesn't give you any room to avoid it or so the developers thought. When you get to the second long platform, Bowyer will be just above you, but if you buffer your next jump by sliding back on the conveyor, then jump as Bowyer is transitioning from the upper platform, you can make it over him and skip the fight entirely. The remake is very faithful to the original game, in fact, a lot of the movement glitches we just looked at are present in both. The SNES version had a litany of major glitches as well, so before we get to the sequence breaking glitches, let's see if any major glitches carried over. The biggest time save on the SNES happens at the first major boss, Mac, or Clay Morton, if you've only played the remake, since you can skip this fight entirely. To initiate the fight, you walk up the stairs and hit a trigger volume that starts a cutscene which leads to the battle but you can jump over the trigger itself. The Shy Guys in the throne room have hitboxes, but unlike regular Shy Guys, they aren't programmed to start a battle when you collide with them. Instead, you can stand on them normally. This on its own isn't enough to skip the trigger, but the Shy Guys are jumping, and if you jump at the apex of the Shy Guys' height, you'll get enough distance to pass the trigger. This lets you talk to the Chancellor starting another cutscene, and when it fades to black, Mac and the Shy Guys are taken away, giving you a star and skipping the boss fight. In the remake, the skip doesn't work, as no matter what you do, as soon as you land on the upper platform, you hit a trigger that starts the cutscene, forcing the fight with Mac. The next trick we need to investigate is the skill swap. If you've ever wondered why Peach knows Genoblast or Shocker in the speedrun, it's because of a glitch with the Power Star. If you jump under a Power Star then press X before you open the chest, the menu will open with the Power Star music playing. If you swap the characters in your party around while in this state, then achieve a level up, the swapped characters will learn each other's moves. This trick works due to the game assuming characters won't be swapped once a star is active. So while the game thinks it's Geno in slot 3, it's actually Peach. As for if this works in the remake, it seems the developers must have been watching speedruns of the SNES game because they don't let you open the menu while jumping, which leaves one major tool from the Super Nintendo version to investigate, and that's RNG manipulation. In the original game, RNG manipulation served three purposes. 
to ensure you received only one hit per turn in the Terrapin fight at the beginning, to guarantee rock candy freebies in the Clown fight, and to make sure you get certain challenges in the Bowser doors at the end of the game, which are normally randomized. Because the random number generator follows the same pattern from power on every time you boot up the game, certain events can be manipulated by taking precise movement combined with frame-perfect inputs. They typically require a save point to be nearby, since you can't carry perfect movement and button presses for extended periods. And the rock candy manip even requires audio cues from the battle music to help hit the single frame windows to get freebies. In the remake, however, a viable RNG manip hasn't been found for two reasons. In the original, the movement is a lot easier since you only have eight possible directions, whereas the remake has full freedom of movement. And second, and probably most important, the RNG counter in the remake was more than likely properly randomized, which will prohibit any of these tricks. This brings us to the only trick that carried over from the original, and that's Geno Whirl on Exor being a one-hit KO. If you knock out Exor's left eye, then hit a perfect timing on Geno Whirl, Exor will receive max damage and the fight will end instantly. This was originally thought to be an oversight by the devs, but if you look at the code in the original game, this was intended behavior. The remake also includes this mechanic, so any speculation as to if this was intentional or not should be put to rest, unless the devs intentionally included a bug. Which brings us to the remake-only sequence breaks. The first on our list is the Booster Tower Save Point Jump. When you get to the final room before the curtain minigame in Booster's Tower, there's a chest at the end of a platforming section. But there's a hidden chest above it that's very useful to the speedrun, as it contains the goodie bag which you can sell for 555 coins. To save time, it was discovered that just like the flower in Mushroom Way, you can jump on the save point without it sending you to the save game screen if you land exactly on the edge of it. You can then jump on the chest platform and skip having to run to the end of the hall, saving about 5 seconds. The next skip takes place in Bellum Temple beneath Land's End and saves about 10 seconds. Normally, when you enter this room, you're supposed to talk to the shaman, then hit the tongues on the statue in any order you want. This spawns a fortune that informs you what treasure awaits you in the next room, ranging from enemy encounters to frog coins. If you try and jump on the shaman to skip this sequence, the developers included a failsafe to have him fade away, forcing you to re-enter the room and go through the process of getting a fortune. But, like the save point jump, you can get on the shaman without triggering his escape script. With a precise jump, you can land on the edge of the shaman and avoid triggering the teleport. This doesn't get you high enough to make it up the ledge, but it does let you get on top of one of the Balome statues, which lets you jump to the upper platform and bypass the fortune minigame. The Bellome Temple and Booster Tower skips only save a combined 15 seconds, but the next skip saves more than both of them put together, and it takes place in the Minecart minigame. After beating Punchinello and getting the second star, you return to Moleville through the Minecart minigame, which has four sections. In the first section, you need to navigate a maze of track while picking up mushrooms, which can be used to get temporary speed boosts. The second section is a side-scrolling version, with jumps being important as the optimal path isn't along the bottom track. The third section is a more difficult version of the first, with the final being another side-scroller where you spam mushrooms. The first and third sections are the most difficult, as the tight turns require you to hold the brake for an extended period, otherwise you crash off the track and lose time. In the SNES version, you only needed to tap the brake, but in the remake, you not only need to hold the brake through the entire corner, but also need to reduce your speed below a threshold before taking the corner. Fortunately, the third section has a skip, and it appears to have been built in by the developers. On the second corner, if you consume a mushroom then jump, the speed boost will carry you over the out of bounds section and have you land safely on the other side of the track, saving about 40 seconds and skipping the most difficult part of the minigame. And oddly enough, it wasn't a speedrunner that found this easter egg skip either, it was actually a random Twitch chatter. On the surface, the remake appears to be a well-made game with no skips for any bosses or major areas. But there's one major sequence break that could blow the entire game wide open, as it would skip Rose Town, Booster Tower, and the Sunken Ship. In the Kiro Sewers, there's a pipe that will take you all the way to Land's End. At first appearance, it seems like it's out of reach, as you're not supposed to have access to it until you reach Land's End, which lets you come back to Kiro and grab the chest that's on the upper area. But, 
there is a way to reach the pipe from the Kiro side. If you kite a boo over the small platform under the pipe, you can initiate a battle like we did with the Stumpet Skip, then run, which turns the boo into a temporary platform. This lets you jump on the boo to get to the pipe, taking you from Kiro Sewers all the way to Land's End. The developers foresaw this skip, however, and put in a failsafe, as there's a ledge you can't jump over from the Kiro side. If you come from the Land's End side, however, a barrel gets knocked down, which lets you jump back up once you've grabbed the chest. The ledge should theoretically stop the skip, but there is a Bezo in the room, and just like the Boo, you can use it as a stepping stone to jump on and get to higher areas. In this case, there is a problem. The Bezo is at a higher altitude than the Boo, so it appears as though you can't jump on it. There aren't any other objects in the room that you can get on top of either for more height, so unless a method like the Save Block or Shaman Jump is found, getting over the wall with the Bezo will remain a pipe dream, but the remake also has the new Fast Travel feature. When you open the map, you can fast travel to any destination you've previously visited, and since this tunnel area is in Land's End, I had the idea to cheat my way there early using the Boo, then try and use fast travel to teleport myself into Land's End proper. Unfortunately, the developers foresaw my clever attempt at breaking the game and don't enable fast travel to Land's End if you reach it early from Kiro Sewers. Aside from the skips, the speedrun has a lot of intricacies with the experience, coin, and item routes, and once it becomes more solidified, I'll put out a video explaining it. Until then, thanks for watching, and check out my Patreon, or I'll make you do 100 super jumps.